So picture this, you've come to the end of an amazing and successful portrait photo shoot and as you proudly and joyfully cycle through your work at the end of the day, selecting the best photos to edit first, you suddenly come to the horrific realization that your favorite photo from the shoot is ruined because of some annoying stray hairs that have flown in front of your model's face. Now fear not dear creators because after hours of research and development, testing out and tweaking a number of different solutions, I was finally able to fix this pesky problem, creating the best results I've yet to see from any stray hair removal method I could find online. Now let me tell you, I was this close to giving up and editing another photo, but I was determined to solve this problem so that I could edit this amazing shot of Amelie and I am so glad that I did, because in doing so I was able to come up with a completely new and improved version of an old technique, which I promise you is a guaranteed method to solving the problem of flyaway stray hairs in the cleanest, most natural and fastest way possible. And that is exactly what I'm going to be showing you in this video inside Photoshop. Let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and as you can see we have this fully edited photo of Amélie which comes from a recent outdoor backlighting photo shoot. Now before I show you exactly how I removed the stray hairs across the face using my new and improved formula, it's important to first show you the three other slash older stray hair removal methods so you can become aware of what to avoid and why, as well as when to use the one method versus the other. If you wish to skip to the main editing tutorial for this video, feel free to skip to the following timestamp on screen now. Now the first method is to simply use the clone stamp tool to copy over and paint pixels from one part of the image to another with the goal of covering up these stray hairs with pixels adjacent to the flyaway hair strands. This method is okay, but it can get very tedious and time consuming to keep selecting and reselecting the target pixels and then painting over each strand of hair. It can also get quite complicated and messy in spots like this where you have a lot of overlapping hairs, often requiring you to use target pixels from much further away, resulting in an unnatural and unprofessional result which your client will not be happy with. The second method is something I use to fix stray hairs using two layers of the liquify tool to physically pull fly away hairs down and out of sight. The problem with this method is that it is not suited for stray hairs that fall directly over the face and should be used exclusively for flyaway hairs outside of the model's body and face. Feel free to watch the following video on screen to see a tutorial on how to do this method. So now we get into the third method and the third method is actually the old method from which the new method is based. I'm going to show you this old method and then I'm going to show you how to improve it and then add in a simple extra step to create even more natural natural and clean looking results. So let's begin by creating a stamp of all visible underlying layers by creating a new layer and then hitting shift plus command plus option plus E. Once done, right click the layer and then select convert to smart object. From here, go up to filter, noise, dust and scratches. This filter will enable us to remove or decrease the visibility of the flyaway stray hairs. As you can see, when we increase this value, the flyaway hairs become less and less visible, but unfortunately the trade-off is that we also lose more and more of the natural look and texture in the skin. In the old method, it is suggested to use a very high threshold of 20. I would recommend decreasing this value slightly to about 14 since we are working on stray hairs specifically over the face. And so we want to make this effect as inconspicuous and undetectable as possible. This is how we create the most natural results. This is the first change out of four changes that we're going to be making to this old method. Now, as you can see, this filter has been applied to the entirety of our image. So in order to apply this effect specifically to the stray hairs on the face, what we can do is hold Alt or Option and click this button over here to create an inverted layer mask. And then using a soft, white and very small brush about the width of each individual strand, we can simply start to paint this effect over the stray hairs alone. Now very quickly you will see an issue with this, the skin texture. With every brush stroke we make, we are distorting or overly smoothing the underlying skin texture. 
So we need to bring this texture back artificially and luckily for us because we made this layer a smart object doing so will be very easy. Now before we do that I just wanted to show you what the completed version of this first step looks like. With all the stray heads removed now it's time to add back in the artificial skin texture we just discussed so as to create a natural and undetectable look to this effect. And to do that all you need to do is come up to filter, noise, add noise. Now the old method recommends to use a more complicated form of this step which is to select the Gaussian option and monochromatic so as to remove the color from the noise and then to include a whole new extra step of adding in a Gaussian blur to the noise so as to enlarge the noise. What I'm suggesting with the new method is to use something much simpler and much faster which also creates a much more natural and undetectable result and that is to use a uniform distribution and to deselect monochromatic. Deselecting monochromatic will ensure that the noise maintains its color, which really helps to blend in the noise with the surrounding skin texture on the face. The effect is really like magic, so be sure to keep watching to see exactly what I mean. Now the reason why I would recommend selecting uniform instead of the originally suggested Gaussian distribution in the old method is because when uniform is used in combination with a value of 5, it will create the most natural skin texture results possible using this effect. Especially when used with the next step of this stray hair removal formula. Now before I show you the next step I wanted to first demonstrate the magic of using these values combined with the non-monochromatic and uniform option. You see when you're zoomed in and up close and you toggle the visibility on and off yes you can clearly see the multicolored pinkish noise that we've added in but as soon as you start to slowly zoom out at one point the noise completely disappears and blends in with the surrounding skin texture just like magic. You may notice however that the result is far from perfect just yet. Although the stray hairs are removed we still need to remove the underlying shadows of each individual hair strand. So for the next step in order to create the most professional clean and impressive result possible using this effect all you need to do is begin your regular skin retouching protocol in order to even out the tonal inconsistencies that have been left behind after applying the first two steps. This results in a flawless and undetectable look creating a final polishing effect of the stray hair removal technique. Now you should be retouching your model skin in any case regardless of any stray hair removal required in order to create a clean and flattering look for your client. So I wouldn't even consider this an extra step of the new stray hair removal formula. All it is is a continuation of your regular or typical portrait photo editing workflow. In terms of the skin retouching method used, as you can see I am using a form of local dodge and burn which uses two curves adjustment layers, one to darken brighter patches or inconsistencies in the skin and the other to brighten up the darker inconsistencies. Using these two curves in conjunction with one another is ultimately what creates the very even skin tones that you see here thus creating a squeaky clean, flawless and undetectable removal of these stray hairs across the face all the whilst retaining the natural skin texture underneath. Now you don't have to use this particular skin retouching method if you don't want to. In fact, you can use any method that you like, including frequency separation. However, this is the method that I found to create the most natural and undetectable yet impressive results. In terms of my personal skin retouching methods, I won't be going deep into this topic in today's video because there is simply way too much to cover. It's probably the most extensive and in-depth section in my portrait editing course, since there is a lot of nuance and strategies to discuss Discuss depending on where on the model's face you're retouching. But if you do want an overview of all my high-end skin retouching techniques, be sure to check out the following video on screen for more detailed information. I'll see you inside.